Hello everyone, thanks for coming to my talk. Today I'll discuss about the generic quantized zero bias fit in the superconductor semiconductor hybrid structure. This work was done collaboratively with Dr. William Cole, Professor Jai Dipso, and Professor Shankar Dasarma. We all know that experimentalists have produced many results of zero bias fit, and some even reports the quantized zero bias fit, which looks very promising for the top logical quantum computing. However, when we retrospect the experimental protocol to search for Marana, then we notice that this quantized zero bias fit does not indi necessarily indicate the real Marana. Typically, the experimental platform has so many gate voltages, and they will try to search over the parameter space to identify any signature of zero bias fit. And once a zero bias fit is found, uh, they will fine tune the additional gate voltages, like the terminal gate voltage, to obtain a quantized conductance of 2 square over h. And finally, they will pervasively change the parameter to demonstrate that a pig is somehow robust under such a perturbation. However, in this talk, we want to answer that. Can these zero bias fit be explained by the disorder itself? If so, are these zero bias fit conduct, uh, quantized? We start over the random matrix theory in a class D ensemble, which only requires the particle hole symmetry and thus should be very generic in principle. The reason that we consider a random matrix is because uh, we, we all know that a semiconductor covered by a superconductor have all, many unknown disorders, and it's really hard to find an exact model that matches every aspect in the real sample. Let alone there are so many gate voltages, which makes complex contribution to the band structure and the chemical potential in the nanowire. And therefore, the random matrix may be a useful tool to describe the statistic feature in such a highly disordered system. And we will treat the system as a whole quantum dot enclosed by this dash line, which is described by a random matrix Hamiltonian. Here V1 and V2 are just two gate voltages. We will show later how we can control the gate voltage in theory, like fine tuning them in experiment. To go over the theoretical protocol, to, we first generate a random matrix H, which obeys the Gaussian distribution. The dimension of H is M, which is the number of the channel in the quantum dot. Because M equals 80, it is an even number, we guarantee for all the following results, are, they are topologically trivial. Then we define a lead operator W, which couples the lead and the quantum dot. W is an n by n matrix, where n is the number of channels in the lead. We simply set n equals 4, so that the conductance will change from 0 to 4 e square over h. For simplicity, we can always make W a diagonal by choosing appropriate basis and then each element will be controlled by the determining probability, gamma A, which varies from 0 to 1. And then we can calculate the S matrix and the corresponding conductance using these two equations. To obtain the controllability of the gate voltage, we introduce a multi-parameter space, alpha, to parameterize the final Hamiltonian. Here we have two alphas, alpha 1 and alpha 2, and three given random matrices, H1 to H3. Alpha 1 and alpha 2 vary from 0 to 1, and they are the analog to various gate voltages and magnetic field in experiment. Now we have all the ingredients to calculate such a so-called phase diagram shown here. And this shows the conductance at zero bias voltage as a function of alpha 1 and alpha 2. And from this plot, it's very straightforward to tell whether there is a quantized zero bias peak if we uh, change alpha along a certain path. And here we define two kinds of quantized zero bias peak, the plateau-like region here and the ridge-like region here. Clearly, the plateau-like region is smoother and will change more gradually as alpha changes. However, the ridge-like region is very sensitive to the change of alpha, which is more like the, the unstable zero bias peak in experiment. We first focus on the plateau-like region and plot the conductance along path A, showing figure B here. This, looks, uh, this is the quantized but trivial zero bias peak, which looks pretty much like the experiment. And in figure D, we show the conductance at zero bias voltage along path A. Then we slightly perturb path A to path B and plot the conductance again in figure C and E. We can see that it doesn't change very much. This looks quite robust under the change of parameter. But keep in mind that all these results are topologically trivial because M is an even number. 
We can also try to manipulate the thermal gauge voltage by controlling gamma in here. In a, here in the left figure, we show the change of conductance from a very low probab transmission probability to a higher one. And the conductance will grow from way below 3 square weight to almost 3 square weight, which is exactly the same scenario in the experiment shown in the right figure here, where they also start from a very low, trans the very low transmission probability to a higher one and find that conductance, which is not quantized initially, now becomes quantized. Indeed, in our random matrix theory, it's not even a zero energy state. It's just a pair of empty cross states that are very close to each other. And it's just because the state will be broadened as gamma increases so that it looks like a zero bias peak as, at, at the higher gamma A. Finally, we want to show that all above results are not just for one particular instance. The zero bias peak are very generic in the random matrix theory. We first define the effective Hamiltonian, H effective, which includes the self energy of the leader operator. If H effective has a pair of ima purely imaginary eigenvalues that indicate a zero energy state in a quantum dot, and then we will probably see a zero bias conductance peak. And we need to regenerate a large ensemble and find that a fraction of purely imaginary eigenvalue is actually fairly noticeable. The zero bias peak composed is around 4% of the phase diagram in most of the sample. And the number of 4% here is not important. But what is important is that it's not approaching zero. And then we investigate the conductance statistics in D0 bias peak and plot in the inset that the probability of the almost quantized zero bias peak, which is defined within 10% of two square wage, is also not zero and will increase as gamma increases. We did a very intensive ensemble search and find that even the fast current experiment showing figure A here can be faithfully reproduced by our random metric theory showing figure C here. Here we can see a uh, conductance growth from zero to two square wage and then proceed for a while before it drops. In the right side figure, we shows the conductance as a function of bias voltage at a fixed magnetic field in experiment and a fixed alpha in theory. At B equals zero, it's a soft gap, and at B equals the position where the maximum peak is, it is a quantized zero bias peak. All these features are reproduced by our random matrix theory shown here. On the right figure, we shows two instances of the aggregate zero bias peak from another paper of ours. The aggregate zero bias peak are all the low-lying trivial states, which are directly calculated from the Bogolubo Hamiltonian of a microscopic model, which are mainly this in, in, induced by disorder. We can tell that this ugly zero bias peak looks much similar to the random matrix theory and also qualitatively similar to the experiment. And that indicates even the best current experiment is highly possible to be the trivial and rebound state. And the underlying disorder will be, it, it is very large here. And we also find that conductance of zero bias peak is not robust in experiment too. And the conductance will change greatly from 0.7 E square wage to 2 E square wage, even within a very small parameter space spanned by the supergate and backgate voltage. If it is a real Marana, then it should be very robust if the gate voltage only changes slightly. And this unstable zero feature, uh, unstable zero bias peak feature is also reproduced by our random matrix theory. Here we choose four paths, which start the same but only differ slightly in the end point. Here. And we find that the conductance also changed greatly from 0.65 e square of h to 1.9 e square of h. And finally, here are some take home messages. We first show that the, the random matrix theory can generate results that are resembling the current experiment result. And these results are also qualitatively similar to the ugly zero bias peak, which are mainly induced by disorder. And then a fraction of zero bias peak in random matrix theory is not zero, which indicates very generic. In, theory, in, in, in the experiment, the conductance of zero bias peak is unstable even over a small region of parameter space. And this is also true in our random matrix theory. And finally, the random matrix theory indicates that most of the experiment results are still searching in the trivial and rebound state, which are induced by disorder. Thank you.